Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and I've been reviewing mini PCs here on the channel for about eight or 10 years at this point, and they keep getting incrementally better year after year, but the last year has been pretty crazy because we've been seeing a lot of really good Ryzen-based mini PCs make their way out into the market, and this new one from B-Link called the Sur 7 is probably one of the best ones I have ever looked at, both from a feature standpoint, but also from a performance standpoint. And we're gonna dive into this Ryzen powered mini PC in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from B-Link. However, they are not sponsoring this video, nor are they reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this little mini PC is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at around $600 or so, depending on how you configure it. They do have a coupon that you'll find on the product page that you'll need to apply to get the best price. Now the one we're looking at today is powered by a Ryzen 7840HS processor. This is an eight core processor built on the Zen 4 architecture, the latest and greatest from AMD. And you're gonna see a lot of nice performance boosts on this one versus a few of the others that we've looked at over the last couple of weeks. And it has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM along with a one terabyte NVMe SSD. Now the system is upgradable and when you unscrew the bottom plate there, what you will see first is an NVMe SSD slot there, a PCI Express 4 slot, and you can add an additional drive to the mix there. What you have to do though to get to the other stuff like the RAM and the other NVMe slot is take off that heat sink. So you do have to go through a little bit of work to get at the good stuff down below. Now once you get that heat sink out of the way, you'll see the RAM there at the bottom. This is DDR5 5600 megahertz RAM. It was nice to see that they have some name brand Crucial RAM installed on the unit that we got in. And then of course we've got that NVMe at the top and that is also a PCI Express 4.0 slot. So you do get a good amount of upgradability on this. You can bring the RAM up to 64 gigabytes if you want. So you have some room to grow. So it could actually make a pretty decent little server here given the performance potential that you have with it. Now underneath the NVMe SSD is a removable Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth radio. So you can upgrade that later down the road too. On the front here, you've got some ports worth mentioning including the headphone microphone jack here along with a USB type C data port. The specifications listed as 3.2. So I'm assuming these will do 10 gigabits per second on the front. But again, data only, not power or video. But don't worry, there's more on the back. And here you've got a USB 3.2A port, so you can plug in external hard drives and stuff here on the front. On the back, you've got another two USB ports, but these are USB 2.0. So this is where I would plug in your keyboards and mice and other low speed devices. The ethernet port here is 2.5 gigabit. So if you have a multi-gig network, it will run faster than gigabit. The display port output here will do 4K at up to 144 hertz, but you also have an HDMI output, and these two USB 4 ports also support video output, and this will support quad displays. So if you had four monitors to hook up, you can hook them all up to this one. You'll just need some dongles here for the USB ports. And as I mentioned, these are USB 4 ports here on the back, and these are the 40 gigabit USB 4 ports, which makes this compatible with Thunderbolt devices. And you could plug in, for example, an external GPU or a Thunderbolt hard drive or docking station. I will show you how that works in a minute. And both of these ports are full service. So in addition to the video out and the data going back and forth, you can also power the computer with one of these two ports. It'll take a maximum of 100 watts. And that is the same amount of power that the included power supply delivers. The TDP of the processor is 65 watts. And you'll notice here on the bottom, we've got a kind of a wacky power connector here. It's kind of like a magnetic thing that snaps onto the bottom. So if you don't want to occupy one of those ports for power, you've got the option to use the included power supply here on the bottom. So let's take a look and see how this performs. It does come bundled with Windows 11 Pro, and it does appear to be properly licensed. And what I've got running on it right now is the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test and connected to the computer with one of those USB 4 ports 
is a Thunderbolt portable SSD. This is a Samsung drive that came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program a little while back in full disclosure. And this drive will not work on a computer that's not compatible with Thunderbolt. And the good news is it connected right up and was recognized by the PC. But let's see if we get the full Thunderbolt performance out of it. And it looks as though we are. We're getting about 2.2 gigabytes per second on writes and about 2.5 on reads. And that tells me that this port is performing at the advertised rate of speed here. So your USB devices will work along with Thunderbolt 3 and 4 devices too. And one quick addendum on that test, if you're not seeing the same results with your Thunderbolt hardware, just make sure in your drive properties in the policies section that you have better performance selected along with write caching being enabled. Those two things are important when you've got Thunderbolt drives on Windows to get the most performance out of them. Now what I want to do as I close things out here is take a look at that Ethernet port. So let's run a quick speed test on my gigabit network here and see if we're getting the full two and a half gigabits out of that Ethernet port. And sure enough, we are definitely getting there. Uh, this is the downstream test. I do have now a 10 gig symmetrical connection here at the house. So we're seeing uh, speeds commensurate with other two and a half gigabit Ethernet devices that I have looked at. And on the upstream here, we're getting similar speeds. So a, not, a lot of nice connectivity on this device that can help you get a lot out of your high performance devices and networks. And for general computing, it does quite well, especially given the fact that you've got that powerful processor paired up in this case with 32 gigabytes of RAM. As you can see here, the basics like web browsing are quite fast on this thing. It is rendering very quickly and everything feels almost instantaneous. So if you are doing spreadsheets and word processing and everything else, I don't think you're going to have any issues doing those basic tasks on this device. A little bit earlier, I did load up some 4K 60 frames per second video on YouTube. It did drop a couple of frames as it was playing back. It wasn't significant, nor was it noticeable but it did show up there on the Stats for Nerds as we were playing, and it did that a couple of playthroughs, so it wasn't uh, just a one-off. So it's fine. I think over time, the drivers on the newer AMD processors here will improve, and we'll see less of this, but again, it was just a handful of frames over the course of a two or three minute video. I think it'll do just fine with Netflix and all the other things that you might stream video from. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 333, which is right in line with other Ryzen processors and Intel processors from this current generation. And a little bit earlier, I loaded up DaVinci Resolve with a 4K 60 frames per second project. It really worked quite nicely for basic video editing, even at that resolution and frame rate. As you can see here, it's been able to render these simple transitions in real time without any lag or hiccups. And I think if you are doing the type of editing that you see on this YouTube channel, some basic cuts, it's going to be more than adequate for that, even without an external GPU. If you're doing more high-end stuff, you'll certainly want a more powerful computer. But for the basics, this is working quite well, even at 4K. Now, I was really impressed with its gaming performance. You're looking at Red Dead Redemption 2 here, running at 1080p at the lowest settings. I was seeing frame rates north of 50 frames per second most of the time. It sometimes we get into the high 40s, but generally in the 50s. And sometimes it even went to 60 at this resolution. It was even better at 720p. So some really good performance boosts here out of this new processor. And I was very, very pleased with how this game ran along with some of the other ones that we tested. Red Dead Redemption 2 is still a pretty heavy duty game here. And this little mini PC with no extra hardware was playing it quite well. We also took a look at Doom Eternal. And this one we ran at 1080p at the low settings. And there we were getting between 70 and 90 frames per second. Pretty crazy. And we also took a look, of course, at Fortnite medium settings here. We were getting about 60 to 90 frames per second there as well. So a very nicely performing mini PC here for not only doing work and video editing, but also gaming with no additional hardware required. On the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 3,258. And if you take a look here, that is pretty close to what we saw out of a seventh generation Intel processor based mini PC from a couple of years ago that had a GTX 1060 GPU on board. And this one consumes far less power and it's all on a single chip. So a lot of development here 
uh, over time on these mini PCs and on these processors in particular. You'll be able to find these processors soon on laptops. And what's nice about this design here is that you've got an active cooling fan to keep the performance consistent. And on that note, we ran the 3D Mark stress test, and there we got a passing grade of 98%. You can see the temperature that the processor was running at as well. And what also impressed me about this new mini PC is that the fan isn't all that loud. What I've seen on prior B-Link PCs like this one is that the fan is kind of variable. It kind of ramps up and ramps down. This one is much more quiet and it doesn't have all of that acceleration and deceleration going that we've seen on prior editions. And as you can see here, it's got a much larger uh, area here for airflow with a much beefier heat sink. So I think they've really improved the thermals on this and it's a lot quieter than prior models. In fact, in most cases, you're not gonna hear it at all, even when it's running. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is its Linux performance. We booted up the most recent version of Ubuntu. As you can see, it is quite snappy here and performing quite well, but it did not detect the audio properly. It's got Realtek audio on board. It also did not detect the Wi-Fi, which was surprising because it is an Intel Wi-Fi adapter that is underneath that NVMe board inside of it. So I think over time, the compatibility for Wi-Fi at least will come, but right now it doesn't seem to pick it up. The ethernet though did work fine and we were able to get that working without issues. So that was really the only knock I've got against it here is just those two issues on the Linux side. So overall, this is a great mini PC. Like other B-Link devices, it is very nicely constructed. It's all metal. The performance here is outstanding. They've made some very nice improvements to their cooling system. I love the fact that we've got the USB 4 on board and Thunderbolt support. I just wish that we can get that Wi-Fi working on the Linux side and this would otherwise be a perfect little box. But if you're running Windows and are looking for something small and powerful, this is definitely worth checking out. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.